Erev Tov, good evening. This morning we started discussing the laws of checking for hametz and getting rid of it. We're going to discuss one particular halakha this evening, and it would be a big time halakha de ma'asif for, for, for all of us. Do sfarim, do books that we read from, that we use, that we learn from, need to be checked for hametz or not? First we have to identify what the doubt or what the reason we would need to check it for is. If a person reads and when they read and when they learn, they eat. Some, some of us like having a cookie, a coffee, a, a muffin, a piece of cake, something while we learn, then there could be bona fide hametz in the sefer, in the book that we're reading from. So what's the big issue? The big issue is not like it used to be a hundred or more years ago where someone would look at, as the way my Rebbe says, someone would be reading a book and he'd be learning and all of a sudden he'd, be turn, he'd open to a page and he'd see a sesame seed and he would lick his finger, get the sesame seed and eat it. You have to understand back in the day food was scarce. It wasn't plenty the way we have it nowadays. There's no doubt nowadays if you open up a, a book, even if you find a piece of a cookie or a piece of a muffin from yesterday, you're not eating it now. There's not that doubt. But there is something which is very valid that is a doubt. There is a doubt that when you're learning, or when you're reading, you pick up a book, that when you're flipping through the pages, maybe a piece of hametz, a minuscule piece, anything above the size of a molecular, Quantity, literally, is in that book, and then that falls onto your table, onto a plate, into food on Pesach. That now makes the food that you are eating hametz. Hametz on Pesach is not annulled even in one to a thousand. We know normally by meat and milk, one to sixty, by mistake, you're okay. On Pesach, even one to a thousand, even by mistake, is no K. Before Pesach, by mistake, one to sixty is good. So before Pesach, it's an issue, but it's not that much of an issue. We're talking on Pesach, during those eight days that we have Pesach. I go and I take off from my shelf a book that I had one time in the past 12 months or in the past 12 years even. I had a cookie, I had a biscuit with this book. Shabbat morning, I brought it to the table. I brought it to the table during Shabbat lunch. There was a question, we're reading something. I pull out on Pesach that book and I have it with my matzah and chocolate the way I like it. And a piece of that cookie or that cracker or something that is chametz falls onto my matzah. Molecular size, anything that's visible. That's Chametz on Pesach. So even though I'm portraying it super stringent, I'll tell you what I do. And it's a suggestion. This is within Halakha Lamaseh. It's obviously not the only thing to do, but this is what I do. Number one, I make sure that my Sfarim, my books, are away from food all year long, 12 months. That's a healthy thing to adapt. It's, it, it's cleanliness, it's kavod for the books. You don't have this issue on, on, on Pesach. If not, let's say you love to eat and drink when you're learning or when you're reading. That's good. But what do you do? Anything you plan on using for Pesach and you know or there's a, there's a plausible doubt that you did eat while you read and learned from that book, those books you need to check for Pesach. Those these books you need to check that there's no, that there's no food in them. There could be food crusted on the binding. There could be food in the pages. If you're planning on using a book on Pesach, you gotta make sure that it's either books that you never eat with, or if you ate with it, you go over and check it. So those are your two options. Either don't ever eat with books, don't allow your guests to bring your books, your Sfarim, to your table during mealtime, or whatever you're gonna use, go out and check. Check and clean, make sure that it's fine. I'll end off with one last halakha. If there's any questions later, we'll take them. Birkonim. The 
books that we use to pray from and sing from at the meals on Shabbat and the holidays. 100% that those books need to be bagged and stored away for Pesach. Pesach, you know what you use as Birkat Amazon? You use your Haggadah. The Haggadah serves as a Birkon for the whole eight days of Pesach. Or you have your own Pesach Birkonim. Birkonim from the week. You don't even need to clean them. Again, because that's not chametz, it's not food. It's pieces of chametz that when they get mixed into food, that ruins the food that you want to eat. So birkonim, as dirty as they are, crusted, sometimes you have pages that are stuck together, there's so much food in there. God bless those birkonim, no problem. Don't clean them. Bag them and put them away. You don't need to sell them for their chametz, but you could put them maybe with your chametz dishes, or you could put them elsewhere where you're not going to obviously use them by mistake or on purpose. So again, books that you will use on Pesach need to make sure they don't have chametz in it. Either never eat with them, or if you eat with them, clean them. Birkonim, put them very far away because those are almost impossible to clean and something that we're definitely not going to use. This is the halal, practical law for checking books. There's a machloket, Sfaradim, Ashkenazim, Machmirim, Mekelim. Clean your books, no clean your books, check your books, don't check your books. The way my Rebbe taught to me and the way I hold is that it depends on the mitziyut, it depends on the facts. Factually, is there or could there be any chametz in your books? If yes, you need to check. If not, you don't have an issue. Okay? That's the that's Bhagavad Hashem. We'll continue with that Hashem. Okay, tomorrow morning, um, 6.45.